This is Reverend Esther R. Scott of New Birth Ministries Church Online. You can call me Reverend Essie from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, wishing you victory, Yeshua, love, joy, peace, wit, mercy, wealth, success, patience, virtue, grace, money, health, ruach, wisdom, support, positivity, abundance, greatness, prosperity and Yahweh. Hallelujah. Is God good or what? He woke us up this morning. Amen. Every morning you wake up, you got to thank God for what he has done for us. Amen. Church Online with me, Reverend Essie, every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time at 1-917-889-8054 is for those who cannot attend the usual brick and mortar service, who don't want to leave their church, but need to hear the word momentarily for various reasons, such as sick and shut in, transportation troubles, and so forth. Know that we are praying for you and for God to send you favor quickly. Also, remember that troubles don't last always. Amen. You have the victory. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. 2018. I hope that you are having a good time out there. I hope this radio show is finding you in all good health. God bless you for coming on this morning. And uh, we are going to discuss something today about Happy Mother's Day. And Mother's Day is a very, very important day of the year. We honor our mothers. Amen. Honor our mothers. And hopefully, take them out to eat, or cook them a nice meal. Amen. (laughs) For all that they've done for us, they deserve that. Mother's Day is a wonderful, wonderful day set aside for, to show gratitude. Amen. This is a day of gratitude. Hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day to some of you, and some of you happy birthday as well. We had a lot of birthdays, I noticed this morning, online. Uh, today we will be studying about the importance of mothers over the importance of others. Amen. Hallelujah. Your love is like food to my soul. Mama, hallelujah. I love that song. We should always honor our mothers. That was a song from Mama by Boys to Men. Hallelujah. Let's open this up with prayer. If we don't invoke the Holy Spirit, then you're only hearing words. Amen. Heavenly Father, Abba, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for being our Father. We we honor you first for creating our mothers. Hallelujah. And, and Father God, I ask right now that you use me to deliver this word, Father, so someone will hear you speaking to their heart. Someone somewhere, even if it's just one person, Hallelujah, that will hear you to their heart and come to the foot of the cross and repent of their ways and follow Jesus. Hallelujah, that is the purpose, the intention of this whole radio program, to bring people to Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. And Father, I ask that you cover each and every person that is listening to this right now. Cover them with the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Cover their homes, cover their jobs, cover their finances, their health. Their, their offspring, their children, hallelujah, up line and down line. We're asking for blessings, Father God, in our families. And you even said to pray for our enemies. Jesus, we're going to pray for our enemies right now. And, and Father God, we pray that they turn around, they hear your voice and turn around, just like the enemies in the Bible used as examples for us to see uh, how you can call people out of their crookedness and bring them to the straight places. Hallelujah. We lift up every prayer request that we've ever received. We lift them up to you, hallelujah, and we drop them in your lap as you sit on your heavenly throne. And, Father God, we thank you for mothers. We thank you for being able to praise our mothers, being able to take care of our mothers. We thank you for, God, we thank you for those that have mothers now and those that have gone on, those that don't have their mothers with them, but they have them in their hearts. I know I am one of them, Father God, and you gave me two mothers, and I thank you 
for both of them. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, we are asking that you touch each and every person in your special way, the way that you do. Hallelujah. And cause families to have a wonderful day today with no interferences, no evil interference. Uh, the devil always tries to show up because he knows his time is short, Father, but we read the end of the book. We still win. We win regardless. We're in a win-win. That's another thing we thank you for, Father. We're in a win-win situation. And sometimes whenever we feel low and we might be depressed and something seems like something's following us and trying to take away our joy, we think of you. We praise you. We read the word. I thank you for the word. Jesus, thank you for being there for us. Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKadosh, thank you for being there for us. We love you. We worship you. And we praise you in your holy name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord at all times. Amen. Bless the Lord at all times. God is good. I want, before I get started, someone sent me a poem, a prayer for Mother. Um, she's been with our ministry for years, Judy Caston from Florida. And she sent this poem, and I want to read this to you, okay? Uh, So, hi, happy Mother's Day to Judy and your mother. Amen. Amen. We've been praying for for years. God is good. And it goes like this, a prayer for mother. Oh, Lord, I thank you for my mother so dear. You gave me life and kept her so near. She watched me with her tender care, coddled with love her life did share. Lord Jesus Christ, you made all things so right, guided my parents who kept me in sight, while you, the guardian, always there. Mom gave her hours of constant care. Above all this, she was godly and wise. She used your word when giving advice. When I did wrong, she used your law and then forgave the Savior I saw. Receive my praise, hear my daily request that my dear mother will always be blessed with health and strength in life maintained and then with you in heaven remain. Amen, amen. That was beautiful. Hallelujah. Bless Judy and her mother, her family, her entire family. Um, And mothers are awesome, can you say? So... What we are going to do is now we're going to turn to I'm, – I'm going to try to make it short because I know that you are going to take your parents out to eat or something, right, your mom? Um, so <laughs> I'm going to try to keep this short today. Uh, if you would turn with me to the second, uh, to second Timothy chapter 1. Amen. Uh, second Timothy chapter 1. And – we're going to be focusing on just one verse there, and that is verse number five. And then I want to talk to you for a few minutes this morning about a mother's influence. Amen? Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, reads like this. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, and thy mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Amen. Amen. You know, Abraham Lincoln said, no one is poor who had a godly mother. He went on to say, I remember my mother's prayers, and they have followed me. They have clung to me all my life. All that I am and hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. That was... Abraham Lincoln's quote. Uh, Mother's influence. Amen. We're here this morning to celebrate Mother's Day, 2018. Thank God we made it to 2018. Some didn't, but we are here. Amen. And by the way, if you haven't called your mom yet, here's a little bit of encouragement to you, okay? Call your mom. (laughs) Call your mother. And all the mom said... Amen. Amen. Get in touch with your mom. Call your mom. If you have a schism or a ism, put it in the past. Okay? Put it in the past. Show love, and love will return to you. Amen. We're here to celebrate the day that has been set aside, actually, as President Woodrow Wilson said on May 9th, 1914, 
That's a long time. When Congress declared the second Sunday in May as Mother's Day, President Wilson said that this day has been set aside as a time for, okay, quote, unquote, public expression of our love and reverence for the mothers of our country. Amen. It is a holiday dedicated to peace. Amen. Dedicated to peace. May today be a peaceful day to all of you listeners out there. Amen. With all that our mothers do for us, while we were growing up and even after we leave our residences and go off on the trails of life, they deserve at least one day. I say more. (laughs) Okay, but they deserve at least one day out of the year to be honored and to have gifts and calls and cards sent to them. Amen. And as I said, good food. Amen. Have you ever thought about all the roles that your mother filled while you were growing up? Just think about all the things that your mother did as you were growing up. You know, sometimes life can get a hold of us and take over our minds and we tend to forget things or take advantage of things. Let's not do that. Let's just right now as you're listening to this, just go back in time. Okay, and think of the wonderful things that you're – now, I didn't say bad, negative things, okay, because all of us are negative. All of us, in some kind of way, all of us have made some kind of mistake. Not all of us are negative, but we've done something wrong. If we didn't, we wouldn't need Jesus, right? Okay? Think about the good things your mother did for you. Okay, I, I, I jotted down a few here, okay? And this list is by no means exhaustive. As I heard someone once say, very true, nurse, counselor. Think about the times your mother had to nurse you. All the times she nursed you back to good health or something happened to you and she held you in her arms to make you feel better. Counselor, the times you had problems, the questions that you had that only she could answer. Amen? (laughs) Beautiful. Spiritual advisor. Our mothers are spiritual advisors. Now, there's different levels, okay? Uh, Different people believe differently, but still they took care of you spiritually as well. Educator, before school. I'm not talking about teachers. I'm talking about before school, before anybody else entered into the picture, they educated you. Okay? Nutritionist, right? Accountant. Transportation center, all right? All you soccer moms, amen. (laughs) Football moms, tennis, whatever, okay? Cheerleading, okay? They were transportation center. They were your maid. Think of all the times. When you were young and inexperienced and not really par when it came to cleansing your room, yourself, your body, whatever, okay, did they or did they not wash your clothes, clean your room, or or help you or tell you, amen? Peacemaker, peacemakers, entertainers, they entertained us. When you were younger, did you ever have board times where you wanted your mom to play a game with you or, or read a book to you, okay? There's so many other roles that our mothers fulfill each and every day. And so today, on Mother's Day, we want to say thank you to all of our mothers for all that you do for us with your undying love. So you mothers, I feel it right now in my spirit. There's mothers listening right now. God bless you. God bless you, and we are thanking you. And, yes, you deserve it. And, yes, we're going to take our time, and we're not rushing through this. God bless you. We thank you. You deserve it. And we wish you much more love and peace and happiness. Thank you for being there for us and leading us. Amen. You show peace when deep down inside you may have sometimes felt a war going on. You know, we don't realize. We don't understand. We're so busy living our lives that we don't understand exactly what mothers go through. There can be times where a mother can look at you and smile or cook you a nice meal or have a nice conversation with you, and she has a war going on inside of her, but she will not let you know it. Now, some talk, some don't. Amen? You don't know what they're going through. Okay? But, Mom, you keep it to yourself, and you just keep the peace. I honor women like that. Amen. They're taking on a lot. They're trusting in their creator to handle it for them. 
Love pours out of your soul like hot gold being poured into a vat. And for that, we appreciate. Amen. Now, in 2 Timothy 1, here we have a well-known apostle. Okay, Apostle Paul who wrote most of the New Testament. Amen. Here he's writing to a young new preacher on things that are needed for the church to grow in grace. And the very first subject is on, guess what? Mothers. He addresses Pastor Timothy in the first four verses and then on his maternal influences with sincerity. He speaks of Pastor Timothy's grandmother and his mother's faith. Now, he could have talked about anything. Like this is man to man back in the day whenever women weren't looked on so highly, okay? Uh, okay, there's still legalism going on in these days, right? And the, what did he mention? Fifth verse, mothers, grandmothers. Amen. Okay, this popular apostle, not without persecution, persecution, of course, actually called out Lois and Eunice and told Pastor Timothy that he is persuaded that he too has a meek and gentle heart like his maternal side. Now that's awesome. Amen. That's a blessing. Now note, okay, that he's not going too far like some religions do today and make the woman God a God. So let's be careful doing that. There is only one creator with three characters, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Okay. Amen. Paul is only commending them of their faithfulness to the kingdom. We have to watch who we place on pedestals, folks. He's not telling people to bow down, pray to, and worship these women. So let's not get it twisted. Amen. Even Jesus corrected a Maryizer. And if you look in Luke 11, uh, a woman came up to Jesus. Well, I'll read it to you. Luke 11, 27 to 28. Okay. They want to write this down in your notes. And it came to pass. As he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee and the paps which thou hast sucked. Now you would look on it as a blessing. Maybe she's blessing Jesus' mother, which is awesome. Okay, we are. We can bless Jesus' mother, but we don't turn her into Jesus or a God, you see. And in verse 28, he says, but he, but he, but he said, Okay, yea, rather. So you got but and you got rather. That's letting you know something is getting corrected. But he said, yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Two things. Jesus is letting her know. You know, in other words, in our terms, he's saying, all right, thank you and everything, but let's stay on the, where the truth is. Let's stay on where, where you, your salvation is hanging. Amen. And that is the word of God. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. All right, even he corrected her. So, you know, as we celebrate Mother's Day, let's not forget who the creator of mothers is. Amen? Let's give God all the props, not just half or some, you know, let's give our God all the props, all the thanks. Let's thank him for the mothers, for all of our mothers. Amen. In fact, a female was the first to announce the resurrection of our Savior. They just knew better. Amen? <laughs> Amen. You know, the men were hiding in fear. The men were hiding in fear. But that's another story, okay? Amen. The very first recommendation that Paul gives about the women in Timothy's life was about faith. Faith. There's a song we used to sing in my Bible school. Um, faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Well, you don't need a lot. You just use what you got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Amen. It's important to have faith. People, you know, people will remember you when you show yourself faithful. If you want to be used as an example, folks, 
You have to show faith in God. People want to see that. Show faith in the work of the cross that Jesus Christ did for us all. You know, so many people talk God, but they don't show God in their lives. Yet they expect for others to come to the foot of the cross. Amen. If you preach Jesus and don't show it in your private life, okay, or as a male you chase every skirt and vice versa that you can find, and nowadays that could be male or female, (laughs) who's going to come to the foot of the cross and believe and serve Jesus? God likes things done decently and in order, and that is out of order. Our mind should be staying on him. The Bible tells us we should have the mind of Christ, amen, not the mind of fulfilling our flesh. God is not going to move on chaos, and this is why we have so many dead churches today because it's out of order. It's chaotic, and God's not going to move on it. And people say, well, where's the spirit? I don't feel the spirit in this church because you guys didn't get together. The Bible says, let's reason this out, find out what's going wrong, and correct it. Amen? Amen. God likes things decent and in order. You are in God's way by walking down the crooked path that he intends to end soon and get it out of his face. Amen? I'm totally sure that God is not enjoying the fact that some people are going to go to hell. Sure, because God is love. God is love. And he is trying to show us his love every day in our lives. And I truly feel bad for those that won't accept it. He's handing it out. He's just passing his love to people. But there are going to be some. Okay? As we all know, even in our own circles in life, there are just some. (laughs) <laughs> you know, that just will not convert, will not accept truth. How many of us know people that will not accept truth? I know that uh, God is going to be relieved to get that out of the way so that the strong and sometimes weary but believing Christian can enjoy heaven and get this party started. Amen. How many of us are ready to get this party started? Amen. God is good. Let's do this. Let's go out and tell people about the love of Jesus Christ. As many as you can. You know, I've been noticing something in my own life lately. And it's a shame to admit that I'm just, just noticing this. Like, it, it, hey, everybody's on a different level. So it takes us time sometimes. Right? Amen. But I've been noticing lately, everywhere I go lately, it seems like everywhere I go, I find somebody to pray with or on. You know, I bought a, a, a push mower a few days ago. And the husband gets out, takes the push mower, shows it to me and everything, puts it in my trunk for me. We're talking and everything from my, well, my old uh, hometown. And, and I'm talking to him, and I noticed the conversation's getting really warm. All I was doing was buying a push lawn mower, right? And so I said, so where's your wife? You know, I just asked for her, uh, and, and he said, she's sitting in the car. She's right over there, and a woman waves out the window. So I'm, I walked over to the car, and I said, hey, how you doing? She said, oh, you know, my foot is, she was telling me about she, not a club foot, but her foot was like going to the side or something all these years, and she had a hard time walking with it, and she was getting ready to get an operation done on her foot. She's sitting in the car with a cast on her foot, and she has, um, what do you call it, a, a crutch. And I'm looking, and I'm thinking to myself, well, let's, take, let's, let's pray on that. Do you mind if I pray for you? And she said, no, I don't mind at all. So I'm standing here, okay, I'm, I'm meeting these people in the parking lot of the red, white, and blue thrift store, <laughs> okay, in Pittsburgh. And, I, and I'm standing there praying on this woman. I start praying, and I just felt led to pray for this woman and her foot. Okay, so I'm standing there, and I'm praying to God for healing. In her foot, and 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 they loved it. She, they were praying and with me. We were holding hands. Well, I was holding her hand, and her husband was touching my arm, and we're all praying in Jesus' name. And I do believe that God is going to heal that woman's foot. And if I hear about it, I'll let you know on another radio show. Okay, if I, I remember, I hope to remember. But I believe God's going to heal her. Everywhere you go, find somebody to pray on. Mothers do it. That's why we're celebrating Mother's Day. If we could only see and count the 
people that mothers have prayed for or prayed on, whether a person knew that they were praying or didn't know that they were praying, praying for other people's kids. Amen? Okay? We are to do that for people. Amen. Hallelujah. Party started. Either you're going to tell people about heaven, okay, and praise the Lord, and we'll all meet each other there. Amen. And, you know, it's so good that you could either stay in heaven with Jesus or you can come back down to the new earth. The Bible says a new heaven and a new earth, right? So who else has those choices? We do. <laughs> Amen. You know, and, and there's people that, that are disobedient, okay? They don't want to do things like this. They don't care about other people. They're selfish. You know, to the disobedient. How can you be a great example for the kingdom of heaven and you can't even take correction from your parents? There's, and you know, there's some out there, they know who I'm talking to. There's people who do not like to be corrected. There is something wrong with that. That's out of order. Amen? Out of order. If human beings didn't need to be corrected, God wouldn't have sent apostles, disciples, Apostles have a, a corrective spirit on them. When they come around, you can just about bet the farm on it that God sent them there for a reason. And it's not that he's angry with you or, you know, that your church is doing so wrong that there's something that needs to be corrected. And we respect them as well. You know, if you can't take correction from your parents, then you're wild. And the Bible says, that what does what the word say about a double-minded man? It says he is unstable in some of his ways. No, unstable in all of his ways. So let's not be unstable, folks. Amen? Who's going to follow and believe in a person who disrespects authority with no repentance? Nobody. Nobody. Oh, well, of course, if you don't have the mind of Christ, you'll follow them. That's why we have people who follow Satan. We have Satanists and, and Luciferians and all that kind of stuff because they just don't want the God thing. They want to just do it, okay? They just want to do their own thing, you know? Um, you know, to the ladies out there, okay, I have a little word for you too, the single ladies. All the single ladies, amen. Judge a man's heart according to the way that he treats his mother. This is very very important to your future. Amen? How does he treat his mother? If he respects her, whether she's good or bad now, we're not judging the mother's character. If a man respects his mother, he will most likely respect you. You know, women out there get any man, they just find a man, this is man hunting, instead of letting a man hunt them, they're out there hunting men. (laughs) <laughs> when finally, when the devil finally throws one in their path, okay, which is not the right one because God didn't send him, they found him, okay, and they find somebody that don't like your mom, they dog their mother out, talk about the, you know, you don't want that kind of man because the same way he treats his mother, he's going to treat you, and vice versa. You know, you always got to add that in, amen. <laughs> you know, um, if he dogs his mother out, he just may have a problem with authority. Or a problem with females. There's a lot of them that disrespect the female entity. <clears throat> Amen. I've known some who are misogynists because deep inside they have unforgiveness of some kind for their mothers. Therefore, they disrespect every woman that comes in their path. <clears throat> and, and a lot of us women, a lot of you women listening to this, have you ever met a man who you see good in him? But he just won't let it out. So so you see good in him, but is he using the good for you and with you? Consider that. You cannot. If, if, how they say? The old saying goes, if, it, if the mama didn't raise him, you can't raise him either. <laughs> Amen. That was, just, that was just for our lady listeners. Amen. Now, you know, now, some... Uh, some have done wrong, done their mothers wrongly. And I know that I have. You know, at some point in life, we probably all have disappointed our moms in some way. But I know 
when a mistake has been made, and I have sense enough and gratefulness enough to repent, and I believe that the Lord has forgiven me. Amen? We have to be careful who we judge, folks. Which of us can judge who's been forgiven and who hasn't? Ask for forgiveness and let go. And as the song says, let go and let God. Amen? Someone can be holding a grudge against another who has asked the Lord to forgive them years ago. And here the accuser sits with sickness and death upon them and bad health because they could not forgive someone that God forgave years ago. If he forgave them, can't we? What makes us so high and mighty to not forgive someone else? And here's something for you that I've noticed lately that many believers are forgetting, okay? I've seen some horrible call out. Uh, I've seen some horribly, that is, calling out people on social media and whatever, so forth, okay? And it doesn't make others look bad. It makes them look bad. Do not call people. If you are a Christian, if you are a believer of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, you, we are not to call people out publicly like that. And you think, you know, people think they're cute when they're doing that, and, and, and they just know they're getting somebody back. And half the time, they're not even talking to the right person, or they, or they, or they, got, the, they got mixed signals, and they're telling somebody off that doesn't even deserve it. Amen? Right? Have you ever seen that? It makes them look bad. The only ones who are going to follow them are the ones who are exactly like them. You will know them by their fruit, and no, I'm not talking about numbers here. Like attracts like. Amen? Matthew eighteen fifteen does not include sneak dissing. As the kids call it, when you diss somebody, now it's called sneak dissing. When somebody gets online, let's say somebody has a problem with you, um, I don't know, the way you cook or something. Okay? And so somebody gets online, and they'll say something like, uh, you know, um, People kill me that can't cook and act like they can. You can't tell them anything. That's sneak dissing, you know. So look, here, what, here's Matthew 18. Uh, you've heard me mention a million times, 18, 15 to 17. It says, moreover, this is Jesus' word. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go. Watch, there's three things here. Go, okay, and tell him, number two. Okay, go is one. Tell him, number two. His fault between thee and him Alone, number three. Go tell him alone. And people don't do that. And then Jesus goes on to say, if he shall hear you, um, you gave your brother. But if he will not hear you, then take with you two, uh, uh, take with you one or more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and publican. Amen. And also, Matthew 18.10, take heed that you despise not one of the little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Watch how you treat people. Tell you, watch how you treat people. <clears throat> There's too many people that like to call folks out, okay? Um like they're all that in the back tips, like they're, you know, mistakeless, and they can do these things. Matthew 18, 21 to 35. Okay, watch this. Talking about forgiveness. And then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother uh, sin against me, and I forgive him till seven times? And Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven like to a certain king, which would take account of his servants. Okay, and he goes on to tell his story. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. But for so much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and his children and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him and said, Lord, have patience with me. I'll pay everything. I will pay thee all. And verse 27 says, And the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him his debt. Okay, so he forgave the servant's debt. Okay, here we go. Servant's forgiven. Doesn't owe anything anymore, okay? Watch it. Verse 28, But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. 
Now, he's going to choke him after he just got forgiven. And his fellow servant fell down to his feet and besought him and said, have patience with me, I will pay thee all. His fellow servant said the same exact words that he said, but he owed. Okay? And verse 37, he would not, but he went and cast him into prison until he should pay the debt. So when the fellow servants saw that was, what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. They went to the high guy, okay, and told him what the middle guy did to them, okay? So uh, then his Lord, after all, uh, after that he had called him and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt desires me, should not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? In other words, he's telling me, he said, I forgave you, and you can't forgive somebody that owes you? That's not paying it forward. Should thou not also have compassion on our fellow servant, even as I have pity on you? Then verse 34 says, and the Lord was angered. He was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every brother his trespasses. How can we ask God to forgive us and we don't forgive other people? Come on, we got to stop doing that. Amen? Amen. If you want somebody to forgive you, you have to forgive them. Amen? Because, you know, I believe it's Colossians 2, I want to say Colossians 2.25. What goes around, what, folks, comes around. Amen? And there's another one, I believe it's in Romans. I can't find it now. Uh, but it, 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 it just, you know, some people call it karma. You know, some people get hooked up on that word. But that's what, that's what it says. Okay, what goes around comes around. If you treat somebody bad, it's going to come back on you. If you treat somebody good, it's going to come back on you. Amen? Amen. So we have to be very, very careful. Here it is. Colossians 3. I'm sorry. I'm glad I don't know. Colossians 3, 25. And it says, but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done. And there's no receipt of person. What does that say? What goes around comes around. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. We have to be very, very careful how we treat them. Watch how you treat those mothers out there. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking right now to the people, the disobedient people who don't respect their mother. Well, if you knew about her like I knew about her, I know some things about my mom that would knock your socks off. It would blow your mind. First of all, why would you? Why are you telling your household business? Why look? If you don't, I learned this. Okay, it, 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 all of us have been through some kind of experience, and sometimes, you know, sometimes when people do things, they do it out of um, oh, like a personal experience. They they do it out of hurt. You know how they say the saying says, "Hurt people." hurt people. And sometimes people do it because they don't realize that they're hurting people. Okay? Amen? All right? Sometimes you could do things out of hurt, not realizing you're hurting other people. I know what I'm talking about because I did it. And there's, there's a thing that I did, and I had all good in my heart. I meant good, but I wasn't thinking about other people. And I hurt people. And I asked God to forgive me as soon as I began to see that it was hurting people. You know, so let's learn to repent, okay? There's people that hurt people, okay? And and you've got to stop doing that, you know. Catch on to what you're doing to other people and ask God to forgive you and don't do it again. Yeah, I remember um, I, when I, years ago when I was in high school, uh, there was this girl. We were sitting in the, uh, we were sitting in the, in, the, in the cafeteria, and I heard all of this foul language coming out of this girl's mouth. She was talking about some some girl like a dog. It was horrible. I never heard anybody say that many cuss words in one paragraph. Okay, so you know we're coming in, we're sitting down with our trays, and I asked, I said, well, ooh, who is she talking about? And my friends turned around and said, they turned around and said, her mother, 
I was like, wow, are you serious? It blew me away. And that had to be, let me think, the 70s. That was, it was like around the mid-70s. And, you know, back then, you didn't hear that kind of stuff as much. I mean, at least I didn't, okay? This girl was cursing her mother, her mother's name, shall we say, out to other people in that cafeteria, in that school. She was dogging her own, the woman that she came out of. There's something wrong with that. Hey, look, if any of you people listening to this have that problem, you have a problem with your mother, you need to go to the Lord in prayer. Because if you have unforgiveness, you know, the root of unforgiveness is like cancer. It will eat you away. It, you know, it's, it's, mothers aren't perfect. We understand that. Nobody's perfect. But good Lord, she had you. Do you realize? Uh-oh, I'm sorry. I'm going down another rabbit trail. But do you realize that she, let me think. <laughs> I want to say it in a better way. There's a saying out there that says, you know, your mother could have, left you in the toilet, so to speak. Or excuse me if that sounds too rough on some people, but you need to start respecting your mom. She didn't have to have you. You know that when your mother was pregnant with you, her stomach stretched, her hormones changed, her nails got weaker. You know, because they make women take pills when they're pregnant with baby. What do they call them? Yeah. Uh, I can't think of what they're called. And, you know, and, and, and I'm making them a point here. I can't think of what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about? They take vitamins and everything to, to stay stronger while the baby's inside of them. The mother ate and drank to keep you alive. The mother had you. Do you know you could have been a statistic? This has to be a dog because I didn't mean to go this far. You could have been a statistic, babe. But yet you're sitting here listening to this. Hallelujah. And you're mad at your mom? I don't think it's your mom's fault. Forgive her. Just like I read, what was it, Matthew 18, 21 to 35? Forgive her if you want to be forgiven. Never dog your mom, folks. You young people out there listening, don't dog your mom. Don't sit around your friends. Your friends, all of the drinking, getting high, whatever they're doing, and they're sitting around cracking jokes, do not. The worst thing <clears throat> that you can do is crack jokes about your moms, okay? Oh, I'll tell you what else bothered me. You remember years ago whenever they came out with those mom jokes? Oh, how does it go? How does it go? Um, your mama or whatever, and they would say nasty things about the mom. Okay, don't do not do that. You're, t- you're talking about yourself. Do not dog your honor, thy mother and thy father, and your life. You will live long. Believe that, as they say. Amen? You moms out there, God bless you. I end this with this saying, okay? God bless you. The mothers who work hard and sacrifice for your children, God bless you. The mothers who can't have children but raise them regardless, God bless you. The mothers who lost their children due to seen or unseen circumstances, God bless you. Mental moms. Moms that took care of people with their, their the emotions, mental moms, physical moms, emotional moms, financial moms, moms who were there for you when you needed a couple pennies, godly moms, God bless you. The mothers who were mothers who cannot say that they were publicly, God bless you. The mothers of our cities and towns who helped raise the children of other moms, who just needed a little elderly wisdom, God bless you. Amen. Mothers, happy Mother's Day. God bless you. Hallelujah. And I end. Father in heaven, touch all mothers with your loving touch and make us all whole, happy, and free. Bless those living, those in the past, and those in the future. Cover us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
God bless you. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for using me to get your word out. And may somebody convert their ways. <clears throat> may somebody make up with their parents. Pride. And go to the person that they've been running from. <clears throat> we thank you, Father. And we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I hope you guys listen to something out of that. And I hope that you just, just don't, don't eat too much, okay? <laughs> Save me so. <laughs> you know, but have a good time. I really, I wish, I wish you a good time. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for listening. And I'm here every Sunday, um, Lord willing, as they say, amen, uh, every Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, EST, Eastern Standard Time. And feel free to come on at 1-917-889-8054. And we will be blessed. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom, hallelujah, peace. God bless you. And remember this, Jesus is always Lord. Amen. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>